something? Yes. After Nathaniel Jordan served the American police for some time, he went and joined the military where he worked as the U.S. Marines for some time. to serve my people, most especially my people back in Africa, because he is, yes, he's born and bred in America, but he is an African. He's one of us. Yes, he's one of us. His parents, his great-great-grandparents were taken to America slaves. They didn't go to America smiling. They went to America in chains so that they can go and serve the master, the white man. And it's among us thousands and thousands and thousands of black Americans, if not millions of them, who want to come back to Africa, the cradleland of humankind. Now boys, we all put our hands together as we welcome Nathaniel Jordan, the way to begin my coffee. Thank you. First of all, I would like to give praise, glory, and honor to God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. how to be real men because that is the reason why you're going to this school so that you can study and learn how to be men an asset to our people and so I am here to teach you from the Word of God what is it that the Lord requires of you today so that you can grow up and go from boys to men to be successful so that you can help Africa to rise again. As Brother Kelvin stated, I am your African brother trapped in America. But God has sent me here to issue you a prophetic warning that there is a war against our people. And I am here to inspire somebody today, somebody today, to make sure that you are taking your life seriously so that you can be on the front lines of helping me to fight for the survival of our people. The country I come from, the United States of America, and the West, they have waged a vicious spiritual war for your heart to turn your heart from God and so they have swept this land with lifestyles and ideologies that God calls an abomination and so God has raised me up as a prophetic voice to teach you what is going on so you can be aware of the devices of Satan so that you can be aware of the devices of our enemies so that you can be aware of the tactics of Satan and that once you have the knowledge then we know what we must do to win the war the war for the heart of Africa that's being waged through homosexuality that's being waged through satanic rap music that's being waged through sexual immorality that's being waged through the usage of drugs you want to pay very close attention to what I'm teaching you today because you wish to become successful men 
and you're listening to the voice of a successful man. I've been doing this now full time for seven years. And before I've done this, I was, as he stated, in the United States Marines and in the police department. And now I'm able to come all the way over here and I, afford, I assure you, it is not cheap to travel from the United States of America here to the motherland. Now most successful American men, they come over here and they use this opportunity to have a vacation, to go to the beaches of Mombasa and sit there and kick their feet up and use their American dollars to take all the pretty African women. But instead, I am here dedicating myself to serving the Lord by teaching you what it takes to be a real man. By teaching you what it takes to be a successful man. So you want to pay attention to what I'm saying. I didn't come to Africa to play games. I didn't come to Africa to kick my feet up and relax. I've been preaching every single day all around Kenya, dedicating my time and my voice to helping you to become the kings that God created you to be. But to become a king, it's a process. And a part of that process is understanding your duty to God, your duty to Africa, your duty to our women and our children. And I'm here to tell you that there's nothing funny because our enemies that have been waging a war against Africa for thousands of years that I am well aware of, they are soon to return if we don't get our act together, if you don't rise up and become the king that you should be according to the word of God. If you don't listen to the warning that I will give you today, then they will come in and recolonize and re-enslave this continent. And it won't be funny when you're tilling the ground for the Mazungus. It won't be funny when they have you in shackles. It won't be funny when they come and steal our women from you. It won't be funny then. So either you can take life seriously now and join me, your brother, as an African warrior Living your life with a purpose. Living your life with intention. Or you could be like what the West wants you to be. And that's a nobody. They want you to be a nobody, a nothing, a, 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 a no asset to our people at all. Just wandering the streets of Kenya, begging for money. Wandering the streets of Kenya, making babies that you can't afford to take care of. So I don't want you to grow up and be a disgrace of a man. And a man is not based on your age. Being a man is based on your ability to serve God, to take care of your wife and your children. So I don't care if you're 20, 25 years old. If you're out there uh, using drugs, being lazy, making babies you can't care of your little child. You might have a man body, but you're a little bitty child. And that's a disgrace to our people. And we can't afford to have any more African men. You're letting the Mazungus come in and snatch up your women. And we have to make a stand. They don't even uh, have so many of our African women and they're growing up and they're seeking to be married to anything but an African man. And it's our responsibility to change that, to protect our women. But in order to do that, you have to be a real man. So what does God's word have to say? Because in my country, they don't create men anymore. They make uh, homosexuals in America. They want all the men to have sex with other men. That's what they teach in America. They want you to grow up and act like women. They want you to be effeminized. They want you to be weak. They want you to be lazy. That's what our enemies want for you. So they don't raise and produce real men in America. Count yourself blessed today. 
that you get to hear from your African brother trapped in America because I guarantee you for the rest of your life you'll never hear another preacher like me come to this school. Because they don't want this message in America. They don't want African men teaching African boys how to be strong, be good husbands and an asset to their society. They don't want that. So that's why I'm here, to speak to you. So you can grow up and lead Kenya to righteousness. There's a future leader in here. Somebody, you're going to soak up all of this information. And 10, 15 years from now, you're going to take government position. And you're going to make sure that Kenya stays a righteous nation. You're going to pass laws to get rid of our women selling their bodies for money. You're going to grow up and stop that from happening. You're going to grow up and make sure that no one enters into Kenya promoting sexual immorality. You're going to grow up and fight against that in the government because of this message that you're listening today. You're going to grow up and you're going to fight against the drug usage that's infiltrating Kenya. Smoking drugs and taking drugs to destroy the brain. You're going to grow up and fight against that. Amen. Because this message has inspired you. You're going to grow up and be a great businessman. Not so you can run to America, to the Mazungus that hate you and hate your beautiful black complexion. No, you're going to stay here and you're going to start businesses and hire other Africans to work for you. Amen. You're going to be a righteous husband, a righteous father. You're going to dedicate yourself to sexual purity as your brother is. And I'm a successful American. And I practice keeping my sex life dedicated to the Lord. So if I'm doing that, that should be the last thing on your mind. Because I'm pretty sure none of you in here can rise up and pay for my plane ticket back to America. So you shouldn't even be thinking about sex. The only thing that should be on your mind is what is my gift? What am I good at doing? You all responded to my gift early. I'm used to it. My voice, my gift. I've been getting this reaction for over 20 years. Longer than many of you all have been born. Ever since I've been 14 years old, every time I speak on the microphone, I get the same reaction. Ooh, wow. He sounds like a lion. That's my gift. God gave me my voice. He gave me a strong voice. I'm stronger than most men. That's why I went into the military. I went into the Marines because I wanted a challenge. Real men take on challenges. Real men don't run from challenges. And we have a challenge. We have a wicked culture trying to destroy the hearts of Kenya. We have a wicked culture trying to remove Africa from God's protection so they can turn you into slaves, turn your women into slaves, turn your parents into slaves. Rise up to the challenge and don't let it happen. So real men take challenges on. So I joined the Marines so that I could have a challenge. That's why I joined. So you find out what your gift is. What is your gift? What were you put on this earth to do? What are you good at doing? What do you want to do when you graduate? You should have that written down. If you don't have that written down, you're wasting time. If you don't know what you're good at, you're wasting time. And if you do get access to the phone, this is one of the biggest tools of Satan to keep you in the state of a little boy. We have so many men in America playing video games all day, on Facebook all day, TikTok all day, Instagram all day. 
I'm not on any of those platforms except to educate people. So if you do get access to a phone and you get on social media, you want to follow me. So I can give you more guidance on how to be a successful man. And you can find me at the Minister of Wellness. The Minister of Wellness. I see the few that's chosen that's writing it down. The future leaders, the future kings, that's why I'm here. I'm not under, I hope everyone listening to me changes. That's what I hope. So I don't, but I don't know who will. So I preach hard to all of you because I do know somebody will. The Minister of Wellness. I'm on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. The Minister of Wellness. T-H-E, The Minister, M-I-N-I-S-T-E-R of Wellness. Spell wellness, W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S. to earn everything in life. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you. If Kenya gets overtaken by the Mazungus, it's your fault. If Kenya bows to homosexuality, it's your fault. If there are drugs and gang violence all throughout Kenya, it's your fault. It is the responsibility of us as men to be protectors and defenders of our people. Nobody feels sorry for a weak man. Nobody. As a man, you have to earn everything in life. I earned the right to stand here before you. I worked hard to stand here. I served a brutal 12 years in the United States Marines and as a police officer, working hard every single day. So I earned the right to be here. You have to work for everything you have. That's what a real man does. Real man doesn't shy away from hard work. So if you're shying away from your schoolwork, you're being a little boy. And you can be 80 years old and still be a little boy. And we can't afford that. We can't afford to have no more African men with the mindset of little boys. The book of Proverbs in the Holy Scriptures. If you want to be successful, the great African King Solomon, the wisest, richest man that ever lived, he wrote the book of Proverbs to give us instructions on how to be successful. King Solomon was worth one trillion dollars, had over 1,000 African wives. And he wrote the book of Proverbs to teach us how to be successful. And I read the book of Proverbs every single day. I read one chapter a day. I write down my goals every day. I take life very seriously. I don't play around. Never had a lot of friends. I don't have a single friend from high school. You know why? Because most of your friends aren't serious. They want to keep you in a low position. So some of you all are listening to me. Others are sleeping. Others are cracking jokes. That's a fool. You have a successful African American traveling thousands of miles away, spending millions of shillings to come here and speak to you today. So a wise boy that wants to be a man will be paying close attention to every single word. Every single word, because you want to be the man that I already am. You want to be successful, I already am. So if you are wise, you will be listening to every word I say. So for those that's not paying attention, those are the fools that will help to keep our people down. And those are the fools that will try to keep you down. For the king that's listening to me intensely, you're not going to have a lot of friends. You're not going to have a lot of friends. They're going to want to keep playing games, not taking school seriously, tempt you to do evil. They're not your friends. 
A man don't worry about that. A man worries about his commitment to God. Forget how many friends you have. A man is a leader, not a follower. A man is a leader, not a follower. They'll be begging you for money. You keep studying. You keep reading. You keep your commitment to God. You follow the minister of wellness on social media and the ones laughing at you, the ones playing games, sleeping in class, 10, 15 years from now, they'll bow to you. Trust me. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law. Let thy heart keep my commandments. The commandments of God is how you become successful. You use your gift to serve God. That's your purpose. Stop wondering what your purpose is. Your purpose is to serve God. Your purpose is to learn to cut the commandments of God, obey God's commandments, and then lead your society. You lead your family to God's commandments. You lead this country to God's commandments. Again, if Kenya falls, it's your fault. If the women are prostituting themselves, it's your fault. If your children grow up taking drugs, it's your fault. God put the responsibility on us as men. Stop playing around. For live the days and long life and peace shall they add to you. You want to live a long life? Obey God's commandments. You want to have peace in life? Obey God's commandments. Having a bunch of money doesn't give you peace. It doesn't give you peace. What gives me peace is what I'm doing now. Helping you to become a real African king. Helping you to stop being a foolish little boy and to learn how to be a mature, grown man. That's what, that's what gives me peace at night. Not having a fancy car, and I've had one. Not having a big house, and I've had a very expensive home in America. None of that made me happy. None of that brought me peace. What gives a man peace is fighting for righteousness. That's what I'm saying. You a fool if you don't listen to me. Because a man with my gift in America, in America, Mazungus pay men like me 20,000 US dollars to speak for one hour. That's almost two million shillings. That's how much you can make as a gifted speaker in America. That's what's been offered to me. You can't even come out of your pocket and give me five shillings. So why am I here? Why am I here? I'm here because I love you. And because I know it pleases the Lord. how uncomfortable the message is is what you need to hear I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear I'm here to tell you what you need to hear that's what a real man does he doesn't care he doesn't care about what people thinks all I care about is what God thinks about what I'm doing that's my why I know my gift God gave me my voice I know my purpose is to use my voice to serve him, and my why is to please the Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear when I stand before the great creator. What about you? If you died tonight, what would you hear? Playing games, cracking silly jokes, picking on each other doing stupid stuff, not paying attention in class. I have a list of things that I was given. Not taking your time management. You said they're doing stuff with your sexual organs that you shouldn't. You need to keep your penis in your pants 
because you don't even have a pot to piss in. <laughs> As a real man, your job is to grow up and be a good father so you can protect your daughters against fools. Protect your daughter against fools. That's what a real man is supposed to do. You protect your daughter. You don't let some clown come and tamper with your daughter. A real man doesn't do that. A great father doesn't do that. A great father protects his household. And that's what my why is. Who have you helped today? Whose life is better because you exist? If you can't name me one person you felt, it's a thousand of you all here. You should be helping somebody. Who have you helped? And that's the question that you should be able to answer every single day. And the older you get, if you want to be successful, Here's, how, here's a righteous tip to making a lot of money as a man. Here's a righteous tip. You serve, you, have, you use your gift that can help many, many people. The more people you help, the more money you make. The more people you help, the more money you make. Amen. I've helped a lot of people, that's why I'm here. I've helped a lot of people do what? I'm the minister of wellness. I've helped people to heal. That comes from polluting your cells. That comes from African people who are not eating the way that God instructed us to eat. You want American pizza, American hot dogs, American chicken wings, American fried chicken. You've lost your African mind. American food is poison. American food kills the body. Being a man means being disciplined, and that includes what you put in your mouth. Before you eat or drink anything, you need to consider whether it's going to help you to be healthy. And I consider that. So I've helped a lot of people, thousands, to heal cancer, thousands to heal heart disease, thousands to reverse diabetes. And those thousands of people that I've helped, they're the ones that support me. That's the easy way. The more people you help, the more people you serve, the more money you make. What you don't want to do is what my country, America, teaches you to do. And that's to sell your soul to the devil to make a lot of money. Yeah, you can do that. But then you'll be a disgrace to our people. You'll commit treason. And God will punish you. He'll kill your children. He'll destroy this land. If you decide, well, I don't want to do it the righteous way. I want to sell my soul to the devil for money. So I'm going to let the Mazungus put a dress on me and lipstick and make people laugh. I'm going to let the Mazungus pay me to teach African men to have sex with other African men. Even though God said he hates that behavior. I'm going to sell my soul to the Mazungu. Okay, you can do that and watch what God does to you. Watch how fast God strikes you down. So my suggestion is that you do it the righteous way. Your donations were critical to help me come over to the motherland and help to feed these beautiful children that you see. Uh, and so as you see them eating fruit that from your support, supporting local Kenyan farmers to feed these beautiful children food. And what I asked you all and what I was telling you all was that we did not just want to feed the children the fruit today, okay? Many of them will be going back to their parents and they can't afford healthy fruit. And so it is up to us brothers and sisters that have to work together to make sure that we, are, that we are doing the first and foremost commission that God has given us, and that is to be a blessing to the fatherless, a blessing to the widows. So please, your $100 seed goes a long way 
in helping to feed the children so that long after I go, I want them to have the, the fruits that they need to grow up, be healthy and strong. Many of them told me that they wanted to be a police officer. Who's the one that said they want to be a police officer? And then we had a child that said that she want to be a nurse, wants to be a firefighter, wants to be a medical doctor. And now they understand that they have to eat the medicine foods of God to do that. If you have been blessed by me, your minister of wellness, I'm telling you, I'm looking you in the eye and I'm telling you, you are wrong if you ignore the call to give to help me serve these children. Do not waste money on things you don't need when you see that we have thousands of children that are in need of your assistance. And for those who have answered the call to give, may God richly bless you for your support. Thank you and shalom. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around your neck. Write them upon the table of your heart. Studying God's laws. That's your duty as a man. That's your duty as a man. I'm trying to teach you how to bring the foolishness out of you. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. God is displeased with a lot going on in Kenya. It disturbs my heart how Americanized Kenya has become. It disturbs my heart to see the state of our beautiful African women prostituting themselves on the streets, wearing little bitty clothes so they can attract the Mazungus. All of them want to grow up and be fashion models. That's the worst type of woman you can seek for is a woman that want to be a fashion model because they're selfish. God says that a great African woman is a woman that fears the Lord. A woman that will help you to serve God better. That's the type of woman you want to seek after for a wife when you're ready to do so. When you're ready to do so. And you're not ready right now. So you need to focus on your purpose. Why? Because a man's value grows with age. You will get better as you get older. God made men and women different. The West wants you to believe that a man and a woman is the same. That's not true. So that's the first thing my father said. No lazy men in my house. Then the second thing my father said. My father said, under no circumstances will no son of mine, no son of Pastor Eddie Jordan Jr. will become a... That's the second thing my father said. A homosexual. No son of mine will be a feminine. No son of mine will be acting like a little girl. No son of mine will be whining and crying like a little girl. My sons will be strong. My sons will be fierce. My sons will fight for God. I'm not raising no lazy men, and I'm not raising no homosexuals. And yet that's the culture that the West is trying to bring over here. And you have to stop it. You have to make a stand. <laughs> Trust in the Lord. My favorite passage in Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. With all of your heart and lean not upon your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. This is the goal of man. This is our purpose. Is to acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways and he will direct our paths. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. What is the evil you need to depart from, young men? The evil of using drugs. Many of you, I was told that you come from poverty. 
The reason why so many of us are in poverty is because we have a poor mindset. Because you don't know how great you are. I've come all the way from America to tell you that you are the original kings of the world. I come all the way from America to tell you that mathematics was founded right here in Africa. I come from America to tell you that the original and greatest scientists come from Africa. I come here to tell you today that the greatest doctors come from Africa. Not America. America is not paradise. You're in paradise. You don't know how great you are because you don't know your history. So that's what you should be finding out about how great of a people you are. The greatest kings, African men, you. The wisest kings, African men, you. You taught the world everything. So how dare you not believe that you can rise from your poverty? How dare you not believe that God has a great purpose for your life? How dare you not believe that you can be successful? And the blood of the greatest men that ever lived run through your veins. But you have to depart from evil. And then the Lord will bring health to the body and strength to your bones. You should dream big because God is big. The creator of the entire universe. So you should never feel like there's nothing you can accomplish. With God, nothing is impossible. Don't you let nobody tell you what you cannot accomplish. And the biggest distract distractors you'll have are those closest to you. Are you prepared to walk this path of success alone? Are you prepared to endure temporary persecutions by your fake friends so you can be a great king for Africa? All throughout the world, I went on ahead, I didn't want the wind to be a distraction, so I'll just go off my memory. Because there was a chapter in the, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 5, I wanted to read to you all the entire chapter warning men about the dangers of having sex outside of marriage and having sex with the wrong woman. That, that is not your wife. The greatest men in history have been destroyed because of their lack of discipline when it comes to their sex life. And even I, as the Minister of Wellness, I have not been perfect in that category. So I speak from experience when I tell you, you leave them fashion models alone. Leave them alone. They'll waste you. They'll destroy you. When you're ready, seek after God will put in your life a righteous woman, a virtuous woman. Many, many men have had their money taken away from them because of a lack of discipline in their sex life. And that's why the West that wants to destroy our people, that's why they pump social media with pornography. And so many of our men sitting on their, these phones, watching sex all day, masturbating, playing with their sexual organs to people having sex on the phone. That's a demonic spirit. That's an evil spirit. It takes away your strength as a man. When you release in your semen, life is in our semen. And we have to protect that life force. So releasing your sperm all over the place 
That's the fastest way to be a nobody of a man. That's the fastest way to not be successful. So you should be a virgin. And you should stay one until God sends you a righteous woman. The Minister of Wellness Complete Detox Package, brothers and sisters, I created this package specifically to help detox from the medical decision. You should realize I'm using, I'm being very careful in using cold language and all toxic overload that taxes our system, weakens our immune system. I put together, I, I had this before due to extreme censorship. I had to use wisdom and I had to bring it back in a different manner, but it is back by popular demand. You get the, the very powerful immune support, detox, gut health, mental health, reduce inflammation, the iris sea moss, the dull seaweed, and then you see that spot there, my book. Again, I have to be smart and use wisdom. This is the book that I have exposing the medical decision and it has the full detox plan for the medical decision. And this is all of them, all of these poisons that we've taken since our childhood, the overload of toxic exposure that is taxing our system. This is my complete detox package, theministerofwellness.com, theministerofwellness.com, or call 888-847-8026, 888-847-8026. You cannot eat fruits if you're infested with parasites. Those demons called parasites will sabotage your goals to be healthy. So the Minister of Wellness Ministries, we are affiliated with Zuma Nutrition. I have taken their parasite detox package with great success, and I know it will help you relieve vicious cravings so you can eat the medicine foods of God without it feeling like it's torture. The Minister of Wellness dot com and the store to purchase the parasite detox package or click the link in the description box and pin comment section so the ministry can get the credit for your purchase. Detox your blood today, brothers and sisters. This is the most important book that I have. OK, I have to scratch off stuff so that I have to I have to be smart. OK, detox from the medical decision. You all know what I'm talking about. Get that blood clean as soon as possible. Get this for yourself and buy a bunch of and pass them out to your loved ones. The minister of wellness.com, the minister of wellness.com, the full detox protocol included. The minister of wellness.com, the minister of wellness.com. For those of you who listen to that, again, you're one of the few. And that's what drives me. Coach in America told me, Minister of Wellness. As great as a speaker as you are, let me coach you. Let me help you make 20,000 US dollars an hour. Let me train you, let me coach you. And I said, yes, sir. I said, yes, sir, that's fine, let's do it. I'm the author of five books. I don't play video games, I don't watch sports. I don't listen to American rap music. I don't spend time on social media. I read, I write. I study the word of God so I can become a better man for my people. And so I wrote a book, a controversial book, and my coach was upset with me. He said, Nathaniel, I thought you wanted to be successful or make a lot of money. I am successful, but he said, I thought you wanted to be very rich. I said, I do. He said, well, why would you write this book? I said, because God told me to. I said, I work for the Lord. He said, but the Mazungus who will cut you a check for 20,000 US dollars, they say you have to take this book down. I said, I'm not going to do it. And he said, so you're telling me that you are willing to sacrifice riches for this. And I said, yes. I said, yes. Because there is something 
more important to me than money. There is something more important to me than gold. Something more important to me than silver, than all the women in the world. There's something more important to me. My brothers, my future kings, what's more important to me than a fancy car in a big house is to please God, is to please the one who created the soil. For him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. I fear God so much. I'm afraid not to preach his truth. I fear the creator of the universe. I fear the one who can count the stars in the sky. I fear the one who can take an acorn and turn it into a great tree. I fear the one who can defeat our enemies. I fear the God who knows the number of hairs on your head. I fear him. The one who gave the lion his roar, the leopards his spots, the elephant his strength, the God who owns the cattle or the bowels and hills. And that almighty God has given us instructions that we have to obey as men. And it's time for us to rise up and live up to the commission that God has given us as African men. It's time out for games. It's time out for stupidity. There's a war against our people. I'm here to find an African warrior like me. That's what I'm here for. Do you have the courage that it takes to join me? Do you have the strength that it takes to join your brother? Yes. Do you have the discipline that it takes to join me? Yes. That's what I'm here for. To inspire you. Because we need you to be successful. But the only way you can be successful is to repent. It's time to repent. Repent for wasting time. God is giving you an opportunity to get your education. Repent for wasting time today. Repent for bullying your brother. How dare you? You weakling of a child to bully your brother. We're going to need each other. The Mazungus protect each other. They stand together. They fight together. You sit here looking up to them. What a bunch of weak men we've become. I don't look up to no Masungu. I know who I am. I am a king. I am great. I am powerful. I don't bow down to no one except God. fear in my heart. Ain't no man gonna come take my woman from me. I don't care if Mazungu was sitting right there. I talk to him the same way. Amen. We're supposed to fear the Lord. You're sitting here worshiping these people. Worshiping America. Be a man and make Kenya great. Be a man and make Africa rise again. Amen. That's what a real man does. A real man sit back. Oh, a Zoom course. Oh, I bow down to you. Oh, Mazungu, please. Oh, Mazungu. Get up off your knees. Get up off your knees and be the great African king. They should be running over here. They should be running over here to learn from you. That's my goal. That's my goal. What happens if you don't listen? 
What happens if you don't listen? Drugs and substance abuse, drugs destroy the brain. Only a puny, pathetic man uses drugs. That's a puny, pathetic of a man. We can't afford no pathetic African need. Time management, that's a lack of discipline. Discipline means doing what you have to do, what's right to do, even if you don't feel like it. I don't feel like exercising every day, but I do it. I don't feel like eating healthy all the time, but I do it. I hate American food. I hate American food. And I hate that you love American food. I hate your love for American food. I want you to love your traditional, healthy African food again. If you are benefiting from me as your minister of wellness, if I help you with your health, if you are binge watching my videos, tuning into the services, I am telling you on the authority of the Holy Scriptures, you have a responsibility to help me when you see where your money is going. It's not going towards a fancy car, it's not going towards big homes, it's going towards helping the fatherless, helping those who are in need. And that is a great responsibility that we all have. So again, you know where the, the, the information is, where you can give so that we can provide uh, not only this children's center here, but other children's centers, not only just all across Kenya, but all throughout the motherland and eventually all throughout the world. So I sincerely thank you all for your support. And for those who see this, and you are one of those who continuously benefit from my ministry. I want you to take a look at all these beautiful children here. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't give to help me to be a support to these children, shame on you. And I am disappointed in you. And I know you can do better than that. Thank you. And God bless you all. Bendo means uh, love and uh, Huraha means laughter. So there are two children here. They have not stepped their feet into any institution. We have their little brother here, their, their, their second born. We have their elder brother over there. And uh, we have their mother with their uncle. And um, we, they have their elder sister who have just finished the primary education. Uh, the same, they are, yeah, she has not gone to a secondary school. And uh, you can that is the bathroom that they're using to shower every day when they wake up early in the morning. Show and, the whole uh, path, you can see there they don't have a toilet. Not your toilet, mommy. Now come put up the gochuma the gochuma. Up up and down. So that that is a, that is the same place that you see. Uh, they having bathroom and toilet at the same time. But uh, we uh, we pray to God. Uh, when we will construct their house, we'll construct a semi-permanent house yeah. which will contain a toilet inside right. and a bathroom inside. And that's only two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, that is another two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, from apart from that, we will look for a budget of taking these uh, kids uh, to school. As you can see, so how, what, what is the house made of? It's made of mud. The house is made of clay, uh, mud, sand. Uh, we, 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 we put them together with uh, uh, small water. Then we construct a, uh, a house like this. But the, the only disadvantage that we have with this uh, kind of house, when it rains heavily, uh, yeah. the house cannot sustain the rain, uh, neither the winds. Because as you see, the rooftop uh, it is covered with uh, with some of the linings and some of our uh, iron sheets that are second hand. Uh, so it's our prayer for your support so that we can make a good house for them, a good shelter for them. Here we have uh, and tell them and how much would a good house cost, a good basic house cost. Yeah, uh, earlier on we had uh, we had uh, done a budget with uh, with uh, some of the foreman and it costed uh, 250000 to construct a, 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 a semi-permanent yeah. semi house. So brothers and sisters, 
two hundred fifty thousand shillings. You know, that's only about one to two thousand U.S. dollars. Okay. I appreciate your support. You know how to give the cash app, the Zelle, uh, the ministry. I'll put it right towards here. You all know that I do what I say I'm going to do with your money, right? You all know that about me by now. Stop watching my videos if you're leeching off of me. If you don't have a heart to give, stop watching my videos. Unsubscribe and watch somebody else. I don't care. I'd rather have 20 loyal supporters um, than to have a bunch of leeches, a bunch of selfish leeches. Uh, soaking up my gift that's helping you in your life and you don't have no care in the world for what our people are going through and stop comparing America to Africa. There's no comparison. We're supposed to be vigilant when our time is mean because the days are evil. Satan is always roaring about like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. Satan wants to devour you. Are you going to let him do it? No. Satan wants to devour your family. Satan wants to devour Kenya. That's what Satan wants. And you're close to letting it happen. You better hurry up. You better listen to me and turn from a silly little boy to a grown man real quick. Because let me tell you, this is why God sent me all the way over here. You better listen to the voice of the prophet today. If you let you, you, because you're the mean, if you let the Kenyan government allow the Mazungus to pay them to pass homosexual marriage in Kenya, God sent me to tell you, he will destroy this land. You don't have much time to waste. You don't have much time to waste. You don't have much time to waste. I'm not laughing. I'm not smiling. You don't have much time to waste. You better hurry up and study hard. You better read your Bible every day. You better stay in your books. You better become successful so you can run for office and make sure that Kenya stays under the protection of God because it's almost too late. Amen. But if you keep messing around and then the Mazungus pay the Kenyan government to allow men to marry men, women to marry women, if you let that happen to your country. Just as God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire, he will rain down destruction upon this land. And I don't want that to happen. God not playing no games. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, this is what happens when weak men take over society. When weak men don't lead their families. When weak men are in control of governments. When weak men don't protect their wives. When weak men don't raise their children. They grow up and they allow their nation to become a tool for Satan. And when that happens, God says, I will smite thee. This is Deuteronomy 28. He said, you will betroth the wife and I'll send your enemies in to lie with her. God says to you, my African future kings, my African brothers, this is what God says to all of Africa. If we don't get our act together, you will build a house and your enemies will live in it. You will plant food and your enemies will take your food. You will have sons and daughters and they'll go into slavery to your enemies. God said, I'll strike you with disease. I'll strike you with cancer. I'll strike you with mental illness. That's the witchcraft that is poisoning your mind. 
the witchcraft of American food. That's the real witchcraft you need to be worried about. And God says, my future kings, that if we aren't the kings we're supposed to be, curses will overtake you. Curses will pursue you. Curses will destroy you. Because you did not listen to God and obey his commandments. And God said, I don't care. He said, whatever you do, you'll never be blessed. You'll never rise again. I'll never bless this land to be great again unless you turn your heart back to me. That is the duty of a man. Learning God's commandments, obeying God's commandments, teaching God's commandments, that is your purpose. And when you choose to operate outside of that, you're committing treason against our people. But if you listen to the warning, if you bow down on your knees and cry out to God, help me be disciplined. Help me, Lord, to be a righteous man. Help me, Lord, to lead my family. Help me, Lord, to lead Kenya to righteousness. I want to serve you, God. I want to be an advocate for you. I want to be a righteous engineer, a godly police officer. I want to help my people in righteousness. And if you do that, if enough of you do that, the Lord promises, I will bless you in whatever you do. The Lord promises. The Lord says, I will bless the ground. The Lord says, I will bless you to be a success. When your enemies attack you, the Lord says, I'll cause them to run away. Oh, if you obey my commandments, young African kings, God says, I will establish you as a holy people. God says, I'll protect you in all of the earth will look to Kenya as a shining light of the righteousness of God. God said, I will open up the good treasure. God says, I will make the ground plentiful. I'll give you plenty of livestock. The Lord says, I'll make you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. The Lord says, I'll wipe all tears from your eyes. I'll take away those extreme poverty. I'll turn the hearts of your women back to you if you only obey my commandments. So rise, Africa, rise. That's my message. Rise, Africa, rise. Rise, Africa, rise. Rise, Africa, rise. important package that I have for this time is the immune support emergency stash. So this is when, not if, when the next deadly pandemic comes and, and when we're locked back down, you don't want somebody coughing in your household and they don't have anything for their immune system. This is the time to get it. It'll be impossible to have these in stock when the masses are panicking. It's already priced at 50% off. You don't need a promo code. Get your stash for your immune system. TheMinisterOfWellness.com TheMinisterOfWellness.com This is the second package that I have. The Black Health Disparities Package. If you have comorbidities, you're not going to stand a chance. 
This package covers obesity, blood pressure, immune, diabetes with the blood sugar, and all diseases fall under inflammation. You get all five. There's no promo code needed. It's already it's already priced at half off, 50% off. No promo code needed. The Minister of Wellness.com. The Minister of Wellness. Dot com. The big five brothers and sisters that are the most important, that is absolutely essential or you will be deficient. If you're deficient, you can't have an optimal immune system for the next pandemic. Vitamin D3 with K2, D3 with K2, B12, DHA, EPA and zinc. Those are the big five. And we have those five available, organic, high quality and potent. The Minister of Wellness dot com on the store. The Minister of Wellness dot com on the store. Uh, click the link in the description box and pin comment section. Let's rise forward. <laughs> Father, I come before you humbly. I thank you once again for using a lump of clay like me to deliver such a critical message to your beautiful children. On behalf of everyone in the sound of my voice, Heavenly Father, I advocate to you for forgiveness. Forgiveness of our sins against you as a school, as a city, as a state, as a nation, as a people. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, for allowing evil to penetrate our hearts. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, for not taking the only life that we have seriously. And so now, Heavenly Father, I pray that these young men will go forth and exercise their gift for you, their gift for Africa. I pray that they will fulfill their purpose to go from young men to men who will teach your laws in this land. I pray for them to become righteous, godly leaders of Africa. I pray for them to become righteous, godly husbands, righteous, godly fathers. Heavenly Father, I rebuke the satanic spirit of despair. I rebuke the satanic spirit of sexual immorality. I rebuke the satanic spirit of laziness, infeminization, the satanic spirit of the West that is seeking to destroy the hearts of these young men. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would bless them to work out their salvation every single day with a discipline and a persistence and a commitment that they will help heal this land by promoting righteousness and truth all throughout Kenya. I pray peace, prosperity, repentance, obedience, discipline, wisdom, understanding justice upon them strip away the foolishness from their young hearts and help them to understand that we are a people at spiritual war and it is high time for them to rise to the occasion to be righteous godly kings as the great righteous kings of africa of old I humbly pray this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.